Welcome to JSA TV, the newsroom for telecom and data center professionals. I'm Barb Mitchell coming to you today as we're winding down day three of Data Cloud Global Congress here in beautiful Monaco. And joining me is Steve Scott, CEO of Datalect Precision Installations. Thank you for joining us. No problem at all. Yeah. Uh, how's the week been for you? So it's been, uh, it's been very good. It's been an exciting uh, uh, conference now. I've been here for just two and a half days. And, uh, but it's been, as usual, packed. I like this conference mostly because the, um, it attracts the right kind of audience and, yeah. and the content of the events is generally very good. Yeah. So for our viewers who may not know, can you tell us just a little bit about Datalek? So Datalek is a, uh, a data center construction company. We also provide services. We're really in the build space of the, so the 2 to 10 megawatt type uh, data center size uh, in terms of the company were uh, 120 million pounds of revenue and uh, about 200 employees. We are, by the way, we're also pan-European. We operate in 13 countries. Okay, great. And I, I understand you, you've had um, recent news around your launch of your on-site powder coating facility. I think yeah, that's an important yeah. one to cover today. So it was about a year to deploy that, but uh, a, a little over a year ago, we considered the investment in a a powder coating plant. We have a, a construction facility where we build um, hot and cold oil containment and caging solutions for data centers, and every component is powder coated. Previously, we would uh, export it to uh, to local powder coating specialists, and then bring it back into the uh, uh, into our plant again and deploy it to our client base. But there was a, a sustainability and a carbon. Um, uh, footprint we had to consider there and and also there was uh, a subject a matter really around um, uh, quality and uh, we felt that we could uh, do a better job ourselves so we've got a we managed to compress somewhat the time to market we managed to improve on our quality a great deal and uh, and we had the space to uh, to fit in so it actually has been a, a great project and uh, it is working as we speak today it's working flat out. Great. And I understand yesterday you you participated in the conference by speaking on a panel. I think the topic was surrounding edge. And, I, I, you know, I believe you have probably a lot to say on that topic. Yeah. So, uh, you know, edge data centers, we've been talking about this now for several years. And there's been an awful lot of um, discussion from time to time of what people's opinion of the edge is. And I think finally we are, we're getting there. Um, but the... Um, and I was with uh, a number of um, uh, guys in the industry who I've known well for an awful long time who themselves had well-established opinions about it. However, I think that for me, the edge of the network, we have to consider it as being not just simply the physical edge of the network where the optics stop. We've got to think about it as being the economic edge as we reach into new geographies that previously have been economically not able to withstand the investment required to build data centers and digital infrastructure. And separately, but very importantly, is the, um, is the application edge. As we look at distributed cloud type products across larger geographies, we need those, um, those giant um, cloud providers to develop applications that rely on deploying edge type capacity. And it's that distribution that is driving the, the, um, the build out in tier two and tier three cities and geographies generally. Hmm. And I, the last sort of big topic I want to touch on briefly is, is just around sustainability. I mean, it's such an important thing for everyone across our industries talking about the role that, that we play in, in this. Can you make a, can you comment on that? Yeah, sure. So, uh, so sustainability, everything around ESG and CSG is becoming uh, paramount to almost everything that we do as an industry, but not, not just our industry, but, you know, wi more widespread across um, commerce. And, um, uh, and we're seeing now because of the level of responsibility and the anticipated regulatory framework that's going to surround it, uh, that the... Um, when we're bidding for contracts, the uh, the ESG scoring is uh, set at a far higher level than previously it, it ever was. So now you're far more likely to be disqualified as a consequence of an ESG score than you will be for a price score. Uh, the um, and I think there are 
uh, there are a number of things that are driving this. Uh, ironically, technology is making available more data as it ex as it relates to um, to carbon footprint. And these very very big clients, enterprise or cloud based clients, uh, they can now ask for provenance. And I think that's the important word for every component. Its entire life cycle, cradle to grave footprint, carbon footprint, and they can reasonably expect to have that because that data is made available through our supply chain and should be made, made available through us. So you can now argue honestly and competently far better the carbon impact of building and operating a data center, for example, where in the past it was, um, it was approximated far, far too greatly. So that exactness, I think, is going to be required at a regulatory level and is certainly now already required at a contracting level. Mm, yeah, so, yeah, great points. And I think that, um, you know, for a lot of our viewers, I think that um, they would love to connect with you, likely, to continue some of the ideas, the thoughts that you've presented here, but also uh, connect with Datalex. So how can, how can we do that? How can people find you, find your company? Uh, we don't hide at all. You can easily find us. Uh, you can certainly easily find me. Uh, we're um, we're based out of the, our head office in the UK at Data Lake. We're a business that's been around for the last uh, 10 years. We've enjoyed uh, extraordinary growth. That growth born out of, I think we're very good at what we do, but also um, as data centers get bigger and bigger, the huge general contractors um, are racing after the very big, 51 hegemot, 100 megawatt type facilities right. and in the vacuum they leave behind we can move and uh, and compete well so um uh, i think that um we're going to be in this space here pan-european and in the middle east for uh, a long time to come we'd like to develop more annuity-based products more in the way of managed services and i think that's uh that's work in progress for us but it's um uh it's a it's a great space. I've been in data centers for 25 years yeah. and, uh, and I'm learning something every day. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you. And thank you for sharing with us some of your insights so we can all learn as well along with you. Thank you. And thank you for your time today. We, we greatly appreciate it. We know it's a, it's a busy week. So thank you uh, for sharing this time with us. And thank you, viewers, for tuning in to JSA TV live today on day three of Data Cloud Global Congress here in Monaco. Join us for our next interview in just a few. Until Thank then. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.